Hey coders and welcome to episode 1.1 of our calendar service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. This video is going to be very similar to episode 1 except for now we're going to be opening user owned calendars. So you can tell a lot of these method names are very similar to what we looked at in episode 1 but now we've injected the word owned in a lot of these method signatures. So these four methods are is owned by me, get all owned calendars, get owned calendars by ID, and get owned calendars by name. So let's jump into the code and put these methods to work. So an owned calendar is basically one that you have created or you have been granted ownership of. So if you go back into your Google Calendar user interface, you can see that you have my calendars, which again is something like David, this is the default calendar, and then you also created this one, my tech team. You are owner, you are the owner of these two calendars. But then you have something like other calendars, such as holidays in the United States. You can also subscribe to more calendars, like other people's calendars, or say NFL games that are happening, um, uh, that are happening now, or, or the phases of the moon. And these are calendars that still appear in your Google Calendar, but you're not the owner of them. And sometimes you don't really care, when you're trying to do analysis on your calendars, you don't really care about, say, holidays in the United States, and they just take up space and, and memory, and, and they just make your function last a longer time. So Google has provided a way to get around that, and that is getting all of your owned calendars. So this is accessed through the Calendar app. What I'm going to show you first is actually I'm going to do it the old school way, the the more uh, convoluted way of doing it, and that is first by getting all the calendars, and this will return an array of calendars. Again, we saw this in episode one, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now say filter. So this is a method from the JavaScript array, and what it's going to do is it's going to take a function. It's called predicate here, but it's going to take a function, and then you're going to say for every element in this array, and I'm going to give it the name cal, so for every calendar in that array, and I'm going to do an arrow function, and I'm going to say cal dot is owned by me. So this is owned by me is a method from the calendar class, and we can just take a look at that right here. So if if uh, if this is an array, then let's just pick out one of the elements, and then let's say is owned by you. So here it is. So here is the method. It returns a boolean. If the calendar is owned by you, it's true. If it's not, it returns false. So that's basically what we're gonna do. We're just gonna filter all these calendars and return the ones that are owned by me. Anyways, let's wrap this in a logger log to see this in action, and then we'll. Just to prove that this is now the same as what we're about to do, let's write another line and let's say calendar app. So now let's get the method, the app script method, get all owned calendars. So as you can see here, this is these two both return a array of calendars, but now this one is going to be doing what this is doing right here, the filtering behind the scenes for us, which is kind of nice. So this is just a shorter way of doing it. And both of them are going to return this exact same thing. And actually, before I do this, I'm going to just prove that they are returning the same exact thing. So let me just write something real quick. I'm just going to map all of them to um, to their name. So I'm going to say cal dot get name. And don't worry about what I'm doing too much right here. I'm just going to be instead of Instead of just returning two calendars, I'm going to return the actual name just so that you can be 100% sure that they are returning the same exact thing. And we are, what are we doing here? We're missing a, a um, parenthesis and one over here too. All right, let's run it and we will view our logs. So now we will be able to see arrays and they should be exactly the same. So here it is. So again, we are returning now our two owned calendars. So this this method get is uh, get all owned calendars is returning my tech team and David Weiss. And then when we filter our all of our calendars and we just return those that are is owned by me, it's the same exact thing. My tech team and David Weiss. 
Great, and then we're getting the name of it. That's what this map function is doing, is just getting the name of it so that it doesn't we don't just see calendar, calendar, and then calendar, calendar in the array. Great, so let's comment this out for now. Great, but yeah, again, you can see that this, this method get all own calendars is doing the exact same thing as get all calendars and then filtering by those that are owned by me. Cool, so now let's move on to the next method, which is going to be get own calendar by ID. And this, again, is exactly the same as get calendar by ID. So if we do calendar app dot get owned calendar by ID, here it is. And then if you remember from episode one, the ID is basically going to be whatever you find in when you go to settings on any of these calendars and then you scroll down. Here's the calendar ID. Most of the times for your own calendars and stuff like that or user calendars, it's going to be just the Gmail account. But for, for some of the other calendars, it may be different. So I would just check just to make sure. Anyways, let's paste that in here in between two quotes. There we go. And actually, let's put a parenthesis there. And before we run that, let's just say uh, the next one, which is get calendar by name. So dot get owned calendars by name. So here we go. Again, this is going to return an array of calendars because you could have multiple calendars that are named the same thing in your owned calendars. So it's just going to return every single one of those. Because again, name is not a unique identifier like ID is. So again, let's just get, um, let's get this one again. Let's, so again, the name for this is going to be David Weiss. So we'll type in David Weiss. Great. So if we now save it and we run it, this time we're not going to be mapping uh, to get the name. So it's just going to return calendar and calendar. And we'll see that in the logs. And here it is. So again, this is just going to return returning one calendar, not in an array, because there's only one calendar per one ID. And then this one is going to be returning an array of calendars, but there's only one element in that array. Great. So that is just, again, another way of getting calendars. This time, those calendars that are owned by you. I hope you learned something in this video and enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.